Hello, today we are looking at floor framing and we're going to look over this nice simple floor frame that we have here and go through the names of these parts and the purpose they serve. So let's start from the ground up. I'm going to turn off some of these layers. So we'll start with our support structure, uh, commonly referred to as the subfloor. So anything underneath the bearers is the subfloor. So here we have some posts which could be steel posts they might be timber posts or if you're building a pole home there could be timber poles they could even be made out of concrete or brick which would make them brick piers or concrete stumps over here we have a uh, a bit of single skin brickwork with some piers engaged into that short brick wall and this is why these are called engaged piers and later on, after the rest of the house is built, the brickwork gets continued up around the outside of the house. But we're not going to worry about that right now. On our example here, we've got some steel posts and we've got some engaged piers for our bearers to sit on. And in most situations, our bearers do most of the structural work of holding up the wall and roof frames. Most of the load usually comes down onto these bearers. Some joists can be load bearing, but quite often, a lot of the joists may not be load bearing as well but these bearers will be definitely taking all of the floor load and in some cases most of the roof load as well and on top of the bearers go the joists and these joists as you can see they're put in a lot more often they're usually placed in to suit the flooring sheets or whatever sort of flooring goes on there but we'll cover that later in another video but these are the joists and they go in the other direction now you'll notice there's a, uh, a few missing pieces out of here. So let's turn on the rest of the bits that aren't showing. And there's a few things here we've got to get the names right so that we know what we're referring to when we start discussing a few more things out of the 1684 later on. So you'll notice around here we have an opening. Now for this house, that's some brickwork that's coming up to make a fireplace. But this could be an opening and a floor to suit a stairwell or just about any purpose that you might need a opening coming up through a floor. So you'll notice we've got some pieces that are slightly thicker and pieces that are slightly thinner. That's because these ones around there that look like they've been doubled up, I've got them made a bit thicker because these are pieces that are load bearing. Where these joists come across the floor and they end in midair, that floor load is being supported by this piece of timber which is called a trimmer. These two coming down the side which are parallel to our joists, these are holding up that trimmer and these are called the trimming joists. And then these standard joists which have been cut off, they could have a couple of names either curtailed joist or trimmed joists. So those three names sound fairly similar. You've got trimmed joists, trimming joists and the trimmer. In that situation and it's important to make sure that you know what each thing is called because when you start sizing them using the regulations in the 1684 you need to know exactly which piece you're talking about here is another piece of timber you'll notice i've got it a slightly different color this is because this piece is not doing all of the same work that this one is doing this one is not a structural piece of timber it's not holding up floor load it's just there to give something for the flooring sheet to sit on all the way around the opening. If I turn on that flooring sheet just temporarily, you can see there's a hole in the floor and we've got support all the way along the edge. Generally, that is what a trimmer does, just supplies support around the edge of a hole. So we have two trimmers here, but only one is a structural member holding up floor load. So if we look in the 1684, this is a trimmer supporting the curtailed joist. This is a trimmer that is not supporting anything apart from just the edge of the floor sheet. So let's have a look at these over here. Now these ones along the edge here, they look basically almost the same as trimmers. They seem to go along the edge, but these are actually blocking because these are doing a slightly different job they're not just there to trim around the edge of an opening or to provide support to the edge of something these are performing a structural purpose 
Now these ones I'm going to come back to later, but you'll notice these two and this row through the middle are all the same colour. These two are slightly darker. I've painted them a slightly different colour because they're a different thing. But we're going to look at these through the middle and these on the ends. This row is a row of blocking or you could call it strutting. And this is to do with deep joists, which we're going to cover in a future video. These ones on the end, they're blocking as well. These two in the middle are the same colour as these ones over the other side. So if we come over the other side and I turn on the wall frame, this wall frame, the edges of that door are coming down in between joists. So that blocking is there to serve that purpose. But again, that will be covered in a later video. And that is the main structural members of a floor frame. We have our engaged piers, our posts or our stumps holding up our floor package. We have our bearers, which are our main structural members going across and usually the largest sizes. We have our joists going across that way. We have trimmers or trimming joists, which go around openings in floor. And we have blocking, which serve structural purposes, which we're going to cover another time. The only other thing I will mention is I've used the term floor package and that just means the bearers and the joists all together in size. That's the depth or the height of our floor package. So this floor package, which is a fairly standard construction, this type of floor package is called a joist on bearer system, which I would say most houses are built with that. It's very traditional. You could also have an inline system where the joist is in line with the bearer. And here we see an inline system where the joists are kept down and attached to the side of the bearers. And usually that's only if you have some kind of a restriction where you don't have the height available to get a taller floor package in with the joist on top of the bearer. That's about the only time you would use a system like this is if there's some sort of restriction like that. Perhaps you have a fixed RL that the floor has to reach but you still need room underneath. And I've done a couple of jobs like that where they needed water tanks in under the floor, so there just wasn't quite enough room to get a joist on top of a bearer. So we've had to go to an inline system. It's not my preferred method of construction, but it's certainly legal provided you attach the joist to the bearer with approved framing anchors. So the other thing to be aware of is the type of flooring this is. This system is called a platform floor because we have put down bearers and joists. Then we have sheeted the entire floor all the way out to the other side. And then we build our wall frames straight on top. We build a platform first and that gives us a space to walk around on and build the wall frames nice and safely. The other system is a cut in floor. And what that means is bearers and joists go down first. Then the wall frame goes straight down on top of the bearers and joists. And then we go in afterwards and install our flooring in around our walls around there. So if I take that wall frame away, you can see this flooring has been cut in around all of my wall frame after the fact. And of course, if this were a true cut in floor, there would have to be trimmers either side of where the floorboards end to give some support to the ends of them. So there is a basic rundown of a floor frame system. We've gone through the names of the parts. We've gone through bearer on joist system and inline systems. And we've gone through platform floors and cut in floors.